Well, it's 2.01, so out of respect for everybody's time, I'm going to go ahead and, and get started. But appreciate you all checking in and joining us on this webinar. I hope it's uh, helpful to you. Got a couple more people chiming in. My name's Jim Bretman. My role is I'm a senior application engineer with Jim Myers & Sons. Been here for about nine years. I think I know everybody on the call. So the mission here is to spend the next 20 to 30 minutes explaining uh, Delta Classifier, Grit Classifier system. I'll explain the process and equipment and start with a short PowerPoint presentation. It's, it's six or seven slides long. It's very short. That's the plan. The goal is hopefully you have the knowledge, tools you need to help educate your consultants and owners and plant personnel and, and sell more of these things and certainly know where to go when you've got questions or need some help on that. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and, and get started with the PowerPoint presentation. First screen you're looking at is, is our Delta Classifier. This is a dual hydrocyclone. Actually, this is a 24-inch diameter Delta Class. I'm going to be on this screen for a little bit. Like I say, there's only about five slides, but I'm going to be on this screen for a few minutes, just so you know. I won't be on all of the slides this long. <laughs> but the, the Delta Classifier, what's it do? Um, it separates grit from water. It's obviously a very abrasive application with abrasion being a larger design consideration than corrosion resistance. The system receives grits, a grit slurry from an airlift pump or more typically from grit pumps with a slurry of 1 to 3 percent, typically less than 1 percent solids. And I'll be talking about that a, a little bit more. It consists of, of a hopper and an incline screw, which separates the grit from the organic material as well as the water in the incoming flow. The, shop, the, the hopper has a short retention time, allowing the heavier grit to settle, but not the lighter organic material that, can, that stays with the water and goes back into the stream. The settled grit is carried up an inclined screw while the uh, excess water, the water level in the grit classifier is about right here. As the screw carries the grit above the water level, the, water, the free water flows back into the hopper, into the system, and the grit discharges out, out the end right here. Very slow moving screw, very low RPM, 8 to 10 RPMs. You're looking at the system up at the top picture is in Taft, Texas. It's got no hydrocyclone on it. And it's about a 250, 225 gallon a minute system, if I recall. This, the picture down in the bottom right corner is in Lesourceville County, Butler County, actually, uh, Ohio. You can see it's a dual hydrocyclone. And that's a 24 inch diameter screw conveyor on this. I'll talk about it a little bit later, but honestly, it didn't need a 24-inch diameter screw conveyor, but that's what they specified and that's what they wanted. So that's a, that's a large system. 24-inch uh, diameter is the largest grit classifier that we've provided, but we've provided them on uh, several occasions. Classifiers are sized on hydraulic flow, gallons per minute, as well as solids conveyance for the screw conveyor itself. Those are the two fundamental design parameters. The screw sizes range from 12 inch in diameter, which are by far the most common, again, up to 24 inch diameter. For flows that are 250 gallons per minute or less, approximately 250, 300 or less, hydrocyclones are typically not employed. They still are on occasion, but typically not employed. Cyclones are employed when it's 300 gallons per minute or larger. A hydrocyclone operates on pressure differentials and requires no power supply. There's a cyclone, close-up picture of a cyclone, bottom left. Again, the cyclone receives a 1 to 3 percent grit slurry typically, typically less than 1 percent. Grit slurries any greater than 3 percent and all the way up to 6 percent, the cyclones will, won't perform as well. What I'm talking about here is municipal applications, specific to municipal, municipal applications. The 1 to 3 percent, and let me give you an idea, a 1 percent grit slurry in a 200 gallon a minute system only generates 16 cubic feet per hour of grit, but a 1200 gallon a minute system, 1 percent grit slurry, generates 96 cubic feet per hour of grit. 
So that's where it influences the diameter of the screw conveyor for the, for the solids grit conveyance. Only about 6 to 10 percent of the influent flow into a hydrocyclone goes down into the classifier. Only about 6 to 10 percent goes to the classifier. So talking about the size of the system, that's why when the flows get over 300 gallons a minute, let's just say five, 600 gallons a minute, you don't have to have a hydrocyclone, but the size of the grit classifier is getting bigger and bigger, costing more and more, more steel, more labor. So that's why hydrocyclones begin to get entertained because only six to, six to 10 percent of the flow that goes into the cyclone goes into the classifier, therefore the size of the classifier reduces when you employ the cyclone. All right, I hope I explained that well. So a 600 gallon a minute flow into a cyclone, less than 60 GPM is going into the classifier. Talking just a little bit about the screw, it's very, again, very slow RPM, eight to 10 RPM maximum conveying the, the grit very slowly, allowing the water to fall back into the hopper with that slow RPM. The last comment on this slide is the typical specification for a hydrocyclone is typically that it will remove at least 95% of 150 micron and greater grit particles that have a specific gravity of 2.65 or greater. What that really means is there is obviously, there are limitations on what this hydrocyclone can do. So we have to identify not only the mesh size, the micron size, but also the specific gravity associated with the grit. What you're looking at, of course, are freestanding type grit classifiers. Here, grit classifiers are also applicable and provided in concrete basins. And essentially what we provide is an inclined screw conveyor. In this case, this one goes down another 15, 20 feet below that concrete wall, top of the wall. It's an inclined screw conveyor that's receiving grit. The, the, the basin, I'm preaching to the choir, I know with most of you here, or all of you, but the concrete basin, the floor is sloping towards the foot, towards the lower end of this uh, screw conveyor down in the concrete basin. So the grit falls into the side of the trough, if you will and again is conveyed very slowly up and out, um, removing the grit from, from the basin. The two pictures in the, in the bottom here are, we typically call them cross collector screws. The one on the right is the incline portion of the screw that you're seeing up at the top. The snow is a dead giveaway. The one on the lower left is a horizontal collector grit screw that's used down in the bottom of a concrete basin. It's horizontal. So that's a, another application. By the way, typically we provide these troughs with embedment studs, bolts welded to the outside of the trough so that when the trough is uh, grouted into the basin, it will embed itself in the grout or cement, concrete. Key features, they're provided in 316 or 304 stainless steel typically. I just got a, a, an inquiry today, actually, um, for an application in Illinois that they were asking for a steel, painted steel classifier. I haven't requested one of those I can't, in, in several years. Uh, stainless steel anymore is still at a price that competes very closely with painted carbon steel. By the time we sandblast, prime, paint two coats, ship it, it gets scratched up, touched up in the field, it's by far stainless steel, particularly 304. The price starts to be about the same as painted steel. Because it's an abrasive application, and that greatest design parameter is abrasion, shafted screw conveyors are typically employed in for grit classifiers. Shafted conveyors with high strength alloy steel flights and shafts. Shaftless grit classifiers are out there. Spirac, who only provides shaftless systems, promotes them, of course. Can we provide them? Absolutely. But again, are they provided very often? Not so much, because in a shaftless system, there has to be a sacrificial wear liner. Because of the abrasion, it's going to wear faster than it would in, say, a screw conveyor application for dewatered sludge or screenings. If a stainless steel auger screw is desired in a grit classifier, then you definitely want to, because it's not abrasion resistant, 
I'll say 95% of the time, if stainless steel screw is specified, then either bolt-on shoes, hardened shoes, 500 Brunel or so, are um, bolted on to the flights, or a weld-on hardening is applied to, to about the outer one inch of the perimeter on the carrying side only of the, uh, of the flights. The bottom picture is a picture of an external in-bearing assembly which we promote. A key competitor out there that's been out there for decades promotes an internal bearing. We promote an external bearing. Our logic is fundamental to get the bearing out of the area, and I'm looking at the bottom right corner of the picture, to get the bearing out of the area where all the grit is designed to be collected. So we promote to have this Dura shield and flange mounted bearing to roller bearing to be installed externally. The advantages are it's clearly visible as to if you have any issues. If it does start leaking, you can see it readily. Internal bearings, if you have any issues, you don't know it until it's catastrophic, typically, unless there is a good maintenance program going on, which might be spotted at that time. So that's what differentiates us from competition, from the key competitor in the grit class arena, is that external bearing. Typically, it's only a one horsepower system, by the way. So it doesn't require much as far as horsepower. And lastly, it can certainly be heat traced. We've provided heat traced over the hopper with a stainless steel jacket and insulation can be provided as well. Okay, we certainly can, by the way, provide an internal in bearing assembly. If that's what's called for and there will be no deviation, we can certainly do this. Real quickly, I'm about done with the PowerPoint. Real quickly, this is a, you know, our spotlight is a project we did. At, I mentioned it earlier in Butler County where two grit classifiers and a belt conveyor, belt conveyors were provided. The, the plant was very pleased with it. The engineer, actually it was the same engineer for both cases. The engineer was so pleased with it. They specified um, the same system, but so I guess the moral of the story there is the the repeat business with the engineering firm uh, got us a second job with a very nominal sales effort on the reps and, and our part. So just in summary, we've been manufacturing these systems for decades. We think the strengths that we bring are value. We, f- we feel we bring a superior product at a competitive price. We like to think our reputation speaks for itself. Differentiating ourselves by promoting the external in-bearing assembly we recommend. There's also a system, it's called an aerated grit system, or sometimes called a rolling aerated grit system that some or all of you may be aware of. And it combines an airlift pump, which we engineer and manufacture as well, an airlift pump with a feeding a grit classifier. But this is the rolling aerated grit system with an airlift pump feeding a grit classifier, which I've been talking about today. So that is about it for the PowerPoint. Have we got, anybody got any questions? Good question. It's, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 gallons a minute or so and greater than that. The size of the system, the grit classifier you'd have to build starts to get so big that you, you consider using a hydrocyclone so that you can make the grit classifier portion smaller. And so the, the economics um, start balancing out. Whether you want one or two hydrocyclones, um, good question. And I would say that one factor is redundancy. You might want two in lieu of one so that you've got redundancy. And the second one is if you, once you start getting over like 550, 600 gallons a minute, that hydrocyclone gets, starts getting really big. <laughs> so are there any downsides to it? No, um, other than you've just got high flow going through a large cyclone that should, it, should you have any issues with it, you're, you're out of luck. So that's why they often go to two smaller, more standard, lower cost because they're more common and standard hydrocyclones. So I hope I answered your question there, Joanne. I guess the answer would be no. I have, I've never seen it specified or requested. You know, again, it's a very abrasive application. Not sure fiberglass is what would want to be employed for an abrasive situation. So 
We haven't provided fiberglass uh, troughs for screw conveyors or grit classifiers or hoppers in the past. And uh, to answer your question, have, have never seen it specified either. So 10-4, good question. Typically, the pitch angle is sometimes specified, but it's nominal. It's typically between uh, 22 and 26 degrees. Part of the driving force for that is you want this again it's a slow rpm screw it's turning slowly and so you want to give it enough time out of the water after it's crested the the surface level of the water you're wanting to give it time for the water to fall back so that's why you see some of the but you want the screw conveyor extending so you want the screw extending far enough so that there's i'll call it time retention time with the grit being clear of the water surface so it'll fall back. But to answer your question, that's what the typical incline is. It's industry standard. I, I'm not aware of a competitor being with, outside of that range. Any other questions? All right. Well, I'm trying to be respectful of your time. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Have a good afternoon.